Thank you. My name is Samia Malham. I'm in the ICT sector unit. This is very inspiring, and I learned a lot. My question, I have two questions. One is the future of uh, recruitment and HR management, especially in the ICT field, where you're all specializing, if you can talk a little bit about that. And the second thing is about the access to broadband, affordable, cheap broadband. Obviously, if you're paying somebody three, four dollars an hour, they cannot pay ten dollars for access to broadband in a cyber cafe. And the World Bank has been trying to be quite active in that space, the space of accessible broadband and that of building ICT skills. But often we are we are not seen as a very critical sector. It's it's something more luxury. And obviously you're linking broadband to new job and wealth creation. So if you could talk a bit about this, please. Well, Thanks. Why don't you want to take one of, one of those? Sure. I mean, I can speak a little bit to, I guess, recruitment in the IT sector. I think, uh, you know, this is a burgeoning sector, and as platforms like ours come to be uh, more prevalent and, and workers realize that this is a viable means of getting employment gainfully, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, a, a sort of a shift, which is already underway, towards a greater pursuit of training and jobs in that sector. Um, I know that IT is, when we speak to universities and, and technical colleges that we cooperate with, they're indicating that growing numbers of men and women, more importantly, are gravitating towards IT as a major because they understand that the knowledge economy, even in emerging markets, is a way forward. So uh, I think that shift is already happening at the labor supply level. Um, in terms of how recruitment is going to change, uh, perhaps, again, as labor supply becomes more abundant, uh, it's going to become a tighter market. But to the extent that labor demand is also going to grow and there are more companies setting up and more opportunities for online employment, ideally, the rising tide will carry all boats. I, I'm not a labor economist, so I don't know, but this is anecdotally what we see happening. And Jonathan, is the speed of the internet a constraint here? The, 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 the availability of the internet is a constraint in some settings and you know, rural settings and all. Um, then the speed and quality of the connection remains a constraint for some people. I work from home in South Africa. And you know, I'm, I also work remotely quite a bit. I, I will co collaborate with my colleagues in in, uh, in Bangalore, and there are days when I wish I had a better connection. Many days, um, and and that means that maybe it'd be easier for me to collaborate on some things and not other things. And if I needed a big, you know, remote presence all the time, I, I would need a different uh, a different solution. But I think that the third one. So it, there, there's access, there's speed and quality, and then there's there's the price issue, which is twofold. It's not just what you pay for the connection, but how you pay for the connection. And I think that um, professionals, people who maybe going to be contract workers, anybody who can afford a monthly connection can get into a situation where they, they, uh, they have a plan. And they, they pay for unlimited or nearly unlimited bandwidth. Um, and, that's, and that's how the internet's been built. Um, and that's, that's a nice place to be. Um, for the, the third, fourth, fifth billion people joining the internet, um, through their mobile phone for the first time. A lot of them will be priced by the bit um, as they pay out of airtime. And there are implications for that about what those models are going to be for inclusion. I mean, I, I use an example that's not from employment, but I say, you know, what if the WHO wants to release videos uh, of, you know, prenatal care examples or something like that, but we're asking uh, the, the, the target, you know, person we, whose behavior we'd like to nudge in a certain direction to literally pay to watch that video. And if you're in a situation where you're paying by the bit, um, you, you may have a different approach toward, towards using these things. Right. So all this pricing stuff is let me, let me, Let's collect the remaining questions so everybody gets it. So you know, start. Yeah, Sydney Nakahoro from the Carbon Finance Unit. So, so far the discussion has been based on the positive sides of technology, right? So we, technology improves access to communication, technology connects people, technology offers access to uh, labor opportunities elsewhere in the world. However, and technology might have a different side too. For example, when the, the programmer in Bangladesh can charge $25 an hour, he's not going to provide uh, services to local industries. He's going to be providing uh, services to, to Palo Alto, right, to Bangalore. So it seems that uh, technology in, in some, some cases is going to increase the divide, is going to contribute to the, to the concentration of the highest skilled workers in, in certain centers. So my question is that to what extent we can balance this, uh, this concentration and at the same time creating high quality labor at the local level that can benefit 
with the too low population. Okay, and you had a question? Let's take them all and then we'll figure out how to. I have two questions. First, I. Seems like everybody has two questions. <laughs> My name is Pia Schneider. I work for the Independent Evaluation Group. How many jobs have been created in the past year through your companies? And I assume predominantly in the service sector. So, but the bank mainly works in poor countries, and, and most of the people are in the informal sector and, and agriculture. So, how could this service be expanded to reach these people in, in these sectors? And what, a third question, what could the bank do to um, you know, move you towards that target? Hey, sir. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Matthew McNaughton, and I work in the, um, in the the ICT sector as well. Uh, and I, this is kind of a question related to the point previously made about the other side of technology, um, and kind of the the how in a globalized world we may also be taking kind of the innovation away from the local context. Specifically, if you think about you know developers and persons now working on you know companies and startups that are in North America or other parts of the world, well, there are lots of local problems that exist that need the brain cycles of these innovators. And so I guess I was curious about your, your own sense of thinking. I mean, especially as you know, I've wor I work primarily in Jamaica, and there's a lot of questions about whether you know, developers should be building tools catering to the, the global market or should be catering to the, the Caribbean and the region. And I think that's also a very important issue to, to think about because those areas also need service delivery and problems to be solved. Sir? Jan Rutkowski, Human Development Sector. I have a question to Gary. Uh, how the wage rate is determined for a particular job, given that the wage rates in Philippines are very much different from wage rates, let's say, in Poland? Is it predetermined by the employer, or is it a bargaining process? or? Uh, Thank you. Okay, so why don't we start with that simple one and then we'll get to some of them. Okay, the, the rate is determined by the contractor. So each contractor comes onto ODESK, creates a profile, takes the test they want to take, uh, uploads samples of their work, and then sets an hourly wage based on their skills. And in the beginning, that wage may be lower. Back to the example, um, uh, you know, in the Philippines, I have another one. Uh, a guy was in Omsk, Russia. He started at $7 an hour, went to 14 to 16 He's $30 today. So the rate is determined by the contractor. And, of course, it's going to... The gonna, contractor is the worker. The contractor is the worker. The client is the buyer. The average rate on Odesk uh, uh, is up 60% uh, after one year, 190% after three years. So the mean average hourly rate increases 190% within three years, okay? So it's about quality, not price. Okay, so the, if I can paraphrase the two questions about the big picture. One was about uh, you're creating global demand for workers which prices them out of the local market. Isn't there a downside to that? Mm -hmm. And the second is, won't the system necessarily bias the work towards that which has the biggest global impact and might take work away from the local impact, kind of the orphan drug problem in a... In a mm -hmm. So what... 